Hello and welcome to uh, Surfing the Portal. My name is Paul Marco and with me is Mindy. Uh, we're going to be talking about what's happening on the Pinecone Utopia portal that's put in place for uh, Targeting mm -hmm. Paul Marco and with me is Mindy. Uh, we're going to be talking. Yeah. Okay, well, now you've heard that twice. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about uh, the Pinecone Utopia portal, which is a portal that we put up to investigate things that would be helping targeted individuals that I call selected individuals. And the more I'm working with them, the more I realize how special and selected they are. Uh, well, we had a viewer in there. Here comes the viewer back. That's great. Plenty of room in the chat room. If you're an old friend, say hi we'll say hi back we've got a couple things to present today we're going to go through new things that arrived at the portal and arrived at pinecone utopia this week and uh, there would be i think they will be of interest to the selected individuals and uh, then mindy has some ideas on uh, relieving anxiety which seems to be a, a big problem and I, I can understand why that is a big problem for them. So we'll talk about that. And then I want to get back for the last so many minutes and talk about diving deep down the rabbit hole in search of why this program is happening. Uh, because if we know why it's happening, uh, we can know why you're targeted and we can learn a lot. So what we're doing is we're going down a rabbit hole and uh, I've collected selected ideas uh, that when we put them together might lead us to some kind of an answer. So here we go. Without further ado, I want to introduce Mindy, and she's going to talk about what she found on the portal this week and things that might interest you. Okay. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> it's good to be back on this week's portal. So um, where do I want to start? I actually want to start uh, with an email that came in from one of our contributors. And she mentioned to us that she was really suffering from panic attacks. And I thought that might be a, a really good thing to talk about just for a few minutes because um, most of us have had the experience of having panic attacks. And, you know, when that's happening, it's very intense there's nothing else yeah you can't we, think we thought we might share some of the things that have worked for us in the past um music is a big deal music if you find just exactly the right music that um makes you feel good that has really helped to pull us out of a panic attack right i can remember that um also um I find uh, reading inspiring texts often helps me pull me out of really deep anxiety. And um, actually, I thought I'd, I'd throw out this one that I like to read occasionally. And this is um, from a poet named Rumi. If you're not familiar with him, um, you might enjoy reading some of his poetry. But I thought this was really appropriate. He calls this the guest house. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The shame, the malice, Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Right, unless they're sent by the uh, perp. Right, but you know, maybe there's a larger plan in place. That's right. And maybe, you know, there is something for you to learn from them. And um, lastly, there's one, a third thing that often helps during a panic attack. And, and I, we hear from many of the people who write to us 
and have written into the chat rooms on the Techno Crime Fighters forum that smoking pot really helps. And we thought we could talk about that a little bit because I think what happens is that your, your brain becomes harder to map. In addition to it opening up a source of uh, a new way of seeing things and a feeling of gratitude, which as we've seen, um, a lot of people have written in and said that that's one technique that really helps them to um, relieve the suffering of, of the attacks. Now, it might not be for everybody. Some people, it exacerbates their panics and so it might not be for everybody, but it's it's an interesting avenue, especially since they're closing it down rather quickly with GMO weed and uh, probably putting the control of that substance under Big Pharma. So uh, right now it seems to be available. It seems to be effective for some people and uh, just, a, just another way of getting through that. I was talking to somebody today, actually, a, a tea I called, and uh, I often chat with them during the day, and he said, actually, as an afterthought, that uh, sometimes that helps him. <clears throat> anyway, what, what was All right, in? so let's move on to uh, the contributions to the portal this week. I added three entries. And um, I thought I'd just kind of scroll down and show you what we put in there. Um, this came from someone, uh, the next time you hear voices in your head. And it's, uh, it's a very nice read. Let me see, did I hear? Here's the full article. And uh, good news, you're not crazy. So I'm, I'm not, I don't think I should take the time to really read through it but i just wanted to let you know it was there so that you can visit the, the portal yourself and read through this um it's a pinecone utopia portal and it's there for you what we're doing with this portal is we're making it available for people who have used various techniques to uh, thwart uh, their purpose sometimes, sometimes to uh, relieve pain. Um, there are techniques on there. There's resources. You see how we got into this? Well, I should have said this right off. Yeah, well, this is a good time to say it now. <clears throat> okay. How I got into this is we were working with targeted individuals, selected individuals for a long time, for maybe six or eight months. And then uh, Brian, too, T.E.W., who uh, was somehow uh, inside the program, he would talk about how he thinks the program is structured. And this may not be all the programs because there might be a lot of different structured programs. Mm -hmm. He said that sometimes there were certain things that the uh, selected individual could do that would uh, make it difficult for the perps to map their brain, uh, make it difficult for them. They, they would have to bring in uh, reinforcements, irritate the uh, target even more to try to capture their attention because they were able to use things like music, extreme gratitude, to put them in a different state of consciousness or a state of mind in which it was very, very difficult for the perpetrators to, to benefit from uh, mapping their brain or trying, because mm -hmm. it, was, it was making it very difficult. So we, to me, it sounded a lot like uh, stuff that Mindy and I had studied a long time ago when we were doing a doctor's degree and writing uh, a book on consciousness. Uh, there were a lot of different techniques that we knew about that were akin to this. So we thought, well, let's see if, if targeted individuals are coming up with things like this. So we opened this portal and sure enough, first week we got four or five different entries. Uh, you know, I use this technique, I use extreme gratitude, I use uh, mindfulness concentration, and it really seems to help. So we thought we would open an open source investigation to, uh, 
get people to contribute and learn from that portal. So that's what we've been doing for the last, I guess, six weeks, since this is number six. That's right. Um, uh, the reason we're doing it is because it's an open source investigation. It's for TIs. The reason we do this is for targeted individuals. Now, I will tell you that most of these techniques, the overwhelming majority of these techniques also help in consciousness development, in seeing things from a higher perspective, when, uh, in also gaining more understanding. So, you know, there maybe there is an ulterior motive to try to get these things more in practice. Uh, but I think that the reason we're doing it is for TIs and uh, for TIs to benefit from that. And that's why we do the portal every Sunday, because we want to keep interest up. We want to keep people interested, contributing, learning from this portal. And that's very important to us to keep it going. So if you're listening to this and you've lasted this long and uh, you find it a little bit interesting and the goal of the whole program, the whole uh, blog is to help TIs. If you're behind that, spread this around so we can get people because I know there's TIs out there that don't even know about the portal <clears throat> that could benefit from the techniques already involved, or they might have techniques themselves. So that's the kind of stuff we're working for. And we're going to keep coming on Sunday nights, uh, filling up the airways and entertaining chatters uh, for <laughs> right. as long as we need to. And we invite your participation because that's really what it's all about. So uh, as you read through other people's entries, please leave your comments below them because that's all part of the data we're all collecting and it will help everybody. So yeah, that's the invitation to that. Well, so this is one of the entries that went into, um, where did this go? Into the general discussion, right? So let's go back to that. Um, the second one is a general note from Andy on September 17th, and this was feedback that we got on the last Techno Crime Fighters Forum, episode 26. Now, I'm assuming, but maybe I should never assume, um, that most of you are familiar with the weekly forum that we host. It used to be hosted on the Pinecone Utopia channel up until Google decided that we were no longer, um, how did they phrase it? We were restricted. They've restricted us. They've restricted us from using Google Hangout, which is why we are on the Paul Marco channel, which was just an accidental channel, really. I just happened to have it laying around. <laughs> and what we do is we'll download this and we'll put it on Pinecone Utopia. But if you want to be in on the action on Sunday night, then you have to come to the Paul Marco channel right. to get into the live chat. Otherwise, you can catch this later when it gets uploaded to the Pinecone Utopia channel. Um, but anyway, um, every week on um, Thursday mornings, well, Thursday mornings if you happen to live in the United States, um, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we host a two-hour forum with the... Um, the um, joint investigative thank team. You. The joint investigation <laughs> team, which consists of four incredible women and Paul, and uh, and anyway, and this Mindy was, and Mindy. So I know. Well, yes, occasionally you'll see me, but usually I'm behind the scenes. So anyway, this was some feedback from last week's forum, and um, I thought it was really excellent. So we should share it. And the third entry was examples of gaslighting and stalking by Max. And he wrote in to tell us um, how that occurs for him. So I wanted to share that with you. And lastly, we posted on this tab, Other Worthwhile Discussions and Presentations, um, this article that someone sent us uh, in an email. Um, on mind uploading and I found it really interesting and I thought that many of you would like to read it so um, if you um, 
if you go to read the rest right here, you'll see it comes from Wikipedia. And as we suspect, Wikipedia may not always be on your side. <laughs> that may not be in the best interest of mankind. But I thought that, you know, it was of interest for I'm us interested to read. In this whole brain emulation, mind upload or brain upload, sometimes called mind copying or mind transfer, is the hypothetical. Sure. There you go. There's your first Wikipedia. Is the process of scanning mental state, including long-term memory and self, of a particular brain substrate and copying it to a computer. The computer that could then run a simulation model of the brain's information processing, which it, respond, which it responds in essentially the same way as the original brain, indistinguishable from the brain for all relevant purposes and experiences having a conscious mind. Well, isn't this what Brian too talks about, the fact that part of the purpose of the program is to map the brain of the individual, the selected individuals, put that into another person who acts kind of as AI with your brain, right? So that they can map you, you know, what you're thinking, your responses, your reactions to things. So I thought this was, you know. Oh, this is really heavy. And, yeah. and all the TI should know about this. This is really important to put up, Mindy. Uh, it's also, I, I think, important to know that's the difference between brain and consciousness. Yeah, why don't you explain that? The brain is a physical organ within your head. It works on synapse and, uh, you know, it feeds on oxygen and blood and, you know, like the rest of your body. It's part of your body. And then there's consciousness. And I always uh, make two distinct ways of... Uh, conceptualizing consciousness. The first is your awareness. Are you aware? Are you aware? And in order to be conscious, there has to be a you to be aware of, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not sure that they're able to get that, uh, that brain, which is just a copy of yours, to actually be, actually be conscious of itself in order to... That's a really good point. So. So I don't think that, and then there's the other conceptualization of consciousness that we're going to talk about a little bit later when we get back into the Tao. And that's the idea of consciousness as being everything. It's the Tao, it's the total that everything occurs in. So there's two ways to look at consciousness. One is your awareness of what you're going through. And I'd really be surprised if they could capture that by capturing the brain. Because it seems to be, in addition to the brain, there's the observer of the brain, which is really you. Mm -hmm. And I would doubt that that... Right, so really all they can map is the, is the ego. You know, the, the, the experience you're having in this life, and, and note that I said the experience that you're having isn't right. necessarily you. So the experience you're having is being mapped, but you can observe that. Yeah, you right? may or may not be involved. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, things turn out. I was I was having breakfast. We were having breakfast with a, a young guy that was telling us about the iPhone Oh, X. yes, and all augmented reality. <laughs> He was, he was describing augmented reality. Now, this guy was a computer genius from Australia who decided to check it all and uh, just live by himself, on himself, totally independent of everybody. And uh, But he was talking about the iPhone X and how it can create a simulated reality. In other words, not just a cartoon on the scrying mirror that's on the actual right, machine. And not just a virtual reality. He distinguished between virtual reality and augmented reality, which I had never thought about before. Right. So, so you'd look over to your right, and your iPod X would be create would be creating a who knows what a little Pokemon. X or whatever. Some kind I mean, of an entity. Could be an could entity. It could be, be a, a who knows. Could be a hologram. 
You could project holograms Probably as much that are more real than what you yeah. think is real. Yeah. So that's the kind of reality we're going into. And, and is that consciousness and does that have and, and And it all relates to this mind uploading, you know, this what they're working at doing. Right. So could they manifest your wife by your side when she wasn't there because they downloaded everything about her and could have her appear next to you? Probably. Saying nasty things to you? I would imagine they absolutely are already able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a wild ride. However, oh by the way, I have to I have to mention that uh, we were watching things on the iPod X, iPhone, iPhone X. Yeah. And uh, I, if you move the I to right before the X from the beginning, you get Phoenix, and Phoenix is is their big symbol, especially now, since uh, they're pushing for the demise of mankind. And of course, the Phoenix is the bird that rises from the ashes. So this might be one of their final um, hoo-hahs as they, as they oh. unroll, unroll this thing, yeah. the iPod X, the I Phoenix. Could contribute to the, um, to the big show, you know, the alien messiah that comes through holograms. Yeah. Right? I mean, exactly. that could be part of that whole technology that's needed for that. That's right, who knows. Hi, Travis. Travis says EEG heterodyning. Of course, you can see that if you're if you're watching. Uh, yeah. Well, I only had one last thing that I wanted okay, to share, and that was um, I'm reading this book, and uh, I don't have a lot of time to read it, but every time I pick it up and read it, I get so many insights, and I just wanted to recommend it to all the selected people who might not be aware of this book. It's called The Rape of the Mind. Uh, the Psychology of Thought Control, Menticide, and Brainwashing by Just Mirlu. And um, he, he studied a lot of the brainwashing done uh, throughout wartime. He was a prisoner of war uh, during World War II. And it's so insightful into what they're uh, trying to do with the selected individuals. So I just wanted to pass that along um, for anyone who's looking for some good insightful reading right it's interesting the technology is uh from dr robert duncan yeah uh, travis is talking about dr robert duncan <clears throat> i haven't read his stuff but i hear that he and catherine horton um i think disagree on certain aspects Right. Well, someone said, didn't they, that Brian too was repeating the work of Dr. Robert Duncan. Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not, because I am not familiar. We haven't gone into with that Dr. at all. Duncan's work at all. Yeah. So where does that leave us? Well, that leaves us going on to um, my little featurette here at the end. It's important to me for some reason to figure out what's happening and why that's happening. And so uh, what I want to do is uh, take you along with me on my exploration of how, uh, how things are appearing uh, for me in the investigation of this uh, strange phenomenon of gang stocking, energy weapons, uh, you know, what are they called? Asymmetric warfare. <clears throat> why is this happening? And if if you know why it's happening, you might be able to figure out why it's happening to you. So anyway, so I use a process called synthesis rather than analysis. Rather than digging down deep and taking things apart, that it's a left brain function and very much stressed in schooling. They try to keep you in analysis. They try to keep you out of a thing called synthesis. Now, synthesis is the ability to see across different disciplines and see what they have in common and maybe make some uh, ideas about how they relate and is there a pattern, pattern emerging here. And uh, what we started off with was talking about um, the, the, the duality, 
Notice that we live in a duality. There's black and there's white. There's good and there's bad. We live in a duality. And now, in the time in history that's happening now, uh, the duality seems to be polarizing itself and pulling itself apart. I mean, you can't care if all lives matter. There has to be Black Lives Matter, which is different than other lives. I mean, there's, you know, the, the churches are becoming uh, stronger, and then there's the synagogue of Satan that's appearing. And kind of, I mean, it just seems like a polarization in duality world. It's mm -hmm. And one way to get a handle on duality world and what it's all about would be to stand outside of it and look back into it. Or I like to think of standing above it and looking down on it. Mm -hmm. So rather than getting embroiled in the actual fighting and the uh, right wing against the social justice warriors down here, look at it and see if you can see the pattern of what's going on. One way to conceptualize that is um, comes out of a, an ancient text. Actually, it's about 500 years older than, well, it's 2,500 years old is what it is. An ancient text called the, uh, the, I, the, the Tao Chi, the Tao Ching, and it was written by Lao Tzu. And uh, he would get outside by conceptualizing a thing that he called the Tao, which is everything. So, so Lao Tzu writes about the Tao being outside of the world of duality and encompassing everything. And I'll read, I'll read a little bit of this and then I really want to get into something totally different. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. It's going into a real key uh, idea here of naming things and making separate things by naming them. You have to have conceptualized the Tao as being everything. It's, it's Even naming it the Tao is desecration. So what you have to think of is outside of this uh, duality world, there's, there's this flow called the Tao, and it's everything. It's the consciousness. And inside is this little duality world happening, and we're experiencing this little duality world and trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So that's one way to get outside of the uh, duality is, is to read about the Tao. Now, I'll go on, and then I've got, I have one point to make, and then I'll move on. And, the unnameable is the eternally real. Naming is the origin of all particular things. So when you name something, you create it. Without a name, it doesn't, it's not there. So, so in this process of creation from the Tao, it's naming. And if you go back to the Bible, that's how, um, Everything was spoken into existence by naming and calling and in the beginning. In the beginning, there was the word. The word creates the world. Yeah. So, so anyway, it, go, it goes along with this, and it goes on. I wanted to get into. Oh, it says when 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 people see some things as beautiful, other things are ugly. When people see some things as good, other things become bad. Being and non-being create each other. Difficult and easy support each other. Long and short define each other. High and low depend on each other. Before and after follow each other. In order to have, if you're creating a thing, especially in duality world, it's usually defined by what it's not or its opposite. So we talk about, uh, the creation and the naming has been really critical in trying to understand what's going on with us. Because here we are in duality world, created by naming, created by isolating one thing from another, created by, you know, if you have, if you don't have good, you don't need evil. Evil defines good. 
Right. So, mm -hmm. Bad. So, so anyway, they, they defy each other and um, goes in on at the last thing. It said, uh, the Tao is like a well used but never used up. I always think of the Tao as a verb, actually. It's like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. It is hidden but always present. I don't know who gave birth to it. It's older than God. Yeah. Now, in this translation, they, they use a capital G in God. Uh, not gods, but gods, but God. So I would imagine that that was influenced by the time in which this was translated. This was just translated by Stephen Mitchell, uh, our version. Older than God. But if you're in the naming game and you're creating things by naming them, if you create God, automatically what else have you created? The opposite of God. Right. So keep that in mind as we get mm -hmm. further and further mm -hmm. uh, down this rabbit hole, if you like this rabbit hole. So let's switch gears and stop talking about naming and how things grow out of nothing and how, how things create their opposite. Let's stop. Let's put that aside and uh, look into a deception that is so subtle, so all-encompassing, and so mind-numbing that it almost, it's hard to grasp. You know, there's those things in your awakening. As you're awakening to what's around you and, and, and the different forces around you that are controlling things, as you awaken, uh, You'll, you'll learn things and you'll learn things and then all of a sudden you'll get like a windfall. I call it a windfall. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden you see through the next veil. Like 911 did it for a lot of people. When they realized, really, really realized that it wasn't done by what, 19 Muslims with uh, exacto knives on a, I mean, when you realize that, it's like a windfall because it takes a whole lot of things that are beliefs that are obstructing your views out. Bing, 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 bing. And you can see more and more just by realizing that one thing. Mm -hmm. Another one for me was NASA. Mm -hmm. When you realize that NASA is totally bullshit, no matter what they're doing, no matter what they're talking about, no matter what they're showing you, it's always bullshit because it was created by paper, <laughs> uh, Project Paperclip Nazis that came over in 1945. So once you realize that that has no validity, then bing, bing, there's all these beliefs that are knocked down and you're able to see so much more clearly. Well, when I learned of this thing I'm going to present to you, it was one of those bing, bing, bing moments, because I realized how they were using this to just do a number on mankind, keep us from really being able to think. So, so we did a little video about two or three years ago on this, and every time I watch the video, it makes an impact on me, because I, learn, I see a little bit more of how this manipulation has got us. And this particular manipulation I'm going to talk about is the manipulation of time. Now, I'm not, this is no big secret. They, manip they manipulate time around everything. Uh, Pope uh, Gregor uh, did the Gregorian calendar and re redated everything, shifted everything all around. Uh, geological time that's measured by scientists has been jerry-rigged to uh, support the theory of evolution and how those things should play out. So, yes, they're messing with time, but they're not just messing with the content of time, they're messing with the process of time. How we see time, how it unfolds with us, and they've crippled us by uh, giving us ways of viewing time 
that are counterproductive to us learning something. It's really wild. Where do you see this? In, uh, in the conceptualization I'm going to present, there's three ways of measuring time. One is chaotic time. One is linear time. And one is cyclical time. And of course, they all exist to some extent all the time. But when a culture dominantly embraces one or two of these conceptualizations, it changes the culture. And it erases a lot of things that uh, you could learn, a lot of ideas, a lot of associations you could have, you can't have because you're locked in one of these types of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the kind of time show you a little clip from this video. We will list uh, the video below so you can watch the whole thing. I think it's phenomenally entertaining. Uh, you may or may not, but I guarantee you'll learn something. From it. Anyway, so let's talk about, we're going to talk about chaotic time. Now, let me give you a little overview. Chaotic time is a type of view, a way to view time where everything is unrelated. And this conceptualization of time gives rise to the probably one of the most naive uh, ideas that human beings have ever had. And that's the idea of the coincidence. This gives rise to the coincidence. Let's play a little bit of this uh, thing. I hope it comes through. And uh, then we'll talk about uh, this particular type of time. I don't know if I can beat this big. I don't know what you can beat that big. Wait a second. Just play a little. Okay. Play it little. Uh oh. Here we are. One moment here. We'll get back to screen sharing. If you're out there in the chat, uh, and uh, say so hi. All right, so if I start this, can I not make it big? No, maybe not. Just like. All right. That's right. Chaotic time is the crudest idea. It's the mm -hmm. most mystifying. In this perception, time has no form, no structure, and offers no help in understanding reality or the world around us. Things happen at random. And everything occurs as a coincidence. In this concept, the movement of time is felt, but it follows no discernible pattern. The future holds nothing but uncertainty. All happenings are unrelated and random. Mainstream media fosters this view of reality by presenting events as unrelated specks of data floating in a dark soup of random circumstance. This viewpoint is the one into which we were schooled. Throughout the world, subjects, oddly enough called disciplines, are taught as separate and unrelated areas of information. In primary schools, when a class finishes with its history lesson, the book is shut and put back into the desk to make room for the geography text, which will be used in the next hour. The concept that history creates geography and geography is intimately connected to history is not covered, explained, or even implied. In high school, trained to think in chaotic time becomes supercharged. The disciplines are not only taught in separate classrooms by separate experts, but are walled off from the other subjects. The outside world as a whole. Subjects are never explained as related components of the same picture. Purposeful fragmentation of the thinking process forces a focus on the functioning of the analytical left side of the brain. The more powerful half of the brain, the right hemisphere, which specializes in synthesis, lies dormant through the whole schooling process. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, the trap of chaotic time and the exclusive use of the. 537. Yeah, you only wanted to go to 515. Yeah. All right, so go ahead. And so I just wanted to say a few things about chaotic time and how it's a, it's a total mind screw from a Jung to end. You're taught to think of everything as unrelated. And actually, it starts off in elementary school. You have different subjects. Um, I can remember starting a Waldorf school and they would go into one subject and do everything regarding that subject. In other words, they'd study Holland and they'd do mathematics con connected with, I don't know, whatever, uh, selling tulips or whatever they do in Holland. And then they would do, uh, their artwork would deal with Holland and their writing would deal with Holland. <laughs> It wasn't so that it wasn't doesn't didn't stress the chaotic time the way normal public school does. And it gets you more and more separated as you get older and older. Uh, you'll take different subjects in high school and they'll refine you and refine you. And then when you get to college, you'll take your subject and you'll go deeper and deeper into that subject. It doesn't make you wider or able to synthesize anything, it takes you down a deep rabbit hole. That's why whenever you find somebody with a PhD, it's really hard to, to have them open their mind to anything that doesn't agree with whatever their PhD is in. So I just I want you to think about this because this, actually the, the use of chaotic time and how they do things in chaotic time screws us. If you watch the news, their news items aren't related, when indeed, generally, they're, they're mostly related. I mean, they'll talk about Korea and then move along to problem in Syria, and then they'll move. What do all these things have in common? You know, synthesize rather than analyze, rather than seeing them as components, try to see them as related uh, bits of information. Right. In other words, step back and try to see a bigger picture of, of it instead of focusing in so tightly on the on the incident. Right. Well, we watched Irma come up the coast. Irma, everybody's thinking about Irma, that her, the strength, and uh, possible devastation. Of course, there's a lot of fear porn all over the place mm -hmm. to get you there. But there was no uh, mention, of course, the geoengineering program that has now been recognized by, by Harvard. Uh, there was no history of cloud seeding, which has started, they started controlling hurricanes in the 70s. There was no mention of that. Uh, there were so many related subjects that could have brought in, even the hoax of global warming could have been brought in somehow to, to get the subject out there so that that could be, you know, we're having all these unrelated things, but they seem to be related in different ways. Anyway, I think that we could have learned and maybe benefited from Irma that, that uh, that hurricane, if we would have synthesized it, there would have been some channel or something mm -hmm. that would have done that. Well, anyway, it also, it keeps you in your little box so that, and as I said before, this is the, uh, this is how coincidence is spring forth. The idea of the coincidence okay. really isn't related, it's just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Right, because people don't see the full picture. They're too focused in. Yeah, so that's chaotic time. And they do it all the time. Uh, they do it all the time. And they keep you uh, locked in chaotic time. Second kind of time, which, they, which they're using masterfully now. <laughs> The second kind of time is linear time. 
Now this is really a, uh, a mind screw because this gets you positioned between the past and the future. Just kind of gliding towards something, away from something, and they can use this trajectory to do predictive programming. They can use it, this definitely helps with fear form. Let me uh, show you this part of the video and then we'll come back to linear time. Linear time is the most common conceptualization of the phenomenon of time. This envisions a passage originating with future expectations, running through present reality, experienced, then either forgotten or dumped into the reservoir of memories. This idea also abides in the linear-oriented left brain, where steps proceed in a straight line from point A to B to point C and lockstep off into infinity. It's mechanical, machine-like. Algorithms locked in computers run linear processes like the marching of a blind army, trudging toward logical conclusions. Happily, this view of time aids the function of planning, the calculation of linear expectations, and the establishment of a seemingly marginally predictable future. Unfortunately, with our collective heads locked in linear time, we become easily controlled. In this paradigm, with the use of simple words, one can be manipulated, managed, and used to our detriment by the articulators of those words. Violation of the rules leads to confinement or death. Improper behavior can cost you your employment, freedom, or social standing. Linear reality creates a verbal police state just outside the door, knocking. The linear view warps reality to meet goals and expectations. And since it proceeds relentlessly forward, it discounts everything but the new. All the historical lessons of mankind categorized as boring trash. In fact, the expression, that's history, in Western culture means quite literally that the past stands as extraneous data, irrelevant to the now. This visualization of time cuts humans off from the eternal in themselves and in nature, it creates striving, enshrines competition, engenders stress, produces angst, and puts a rush on our precious time on this planet. Linear time leaves us very much alone, lodged somewhere between the beginning and the end, restless and afraid. The phenomenon of forgetting the past What's past is past, and worrying about the future is endemic in cultures that hold linear time as their dominant concept. With at best an uncertain future and an admittedly irrelevant past, we've created a culture of I don't care, one that drives the worldwide ethics of take, make, and throw away. A danger to ourselves, others, and our environment. Linear time has shot mankind like a bullet screaming toward a concrete wall, knowing all too well that the journey will end abruptly and tragically. One guarantee that linear time mandates is that within this paradigm, future expectations always control the present. And some have come to realize 
that those that control these expectations control the future. Linear time also facilitates an insidious use of the left brain's tension for straight line thinking by inserting in our psyches the expected futures for us to live out as the plan dictates. Through a method known as predictive programming, images of, of a future only desirous to an elite few controllers can be downloaded into the collective psyche after they've been put into a hypnotized state by the flickering media. Since the human subconscious does not differentiate between fiction or fact, the information is stored as an expected future, and the brain, feasting on its new input, sets out to actualize the visualized dystopian nightmare. Elaborately described prophecies implanted by the ruling class have always orchestrated the expectations of the unfolding of time and in turn have colored our reality and motivated our behavior in the desired direction. Linear time creates an opening, a crack in future expectations that can be filled with images, structures, and scenarios easily exploited by Hollywood's poison visions, where a few, in an even more draconian manner, can control the many. But there is a yeah wow i forgot that i was that dramatic in that reading but that is the way i feel about linear time <clears throat> we have a past we have a present we have a future and the future that right now does not look very good because we've been programmed to look forward to a pretty uh dystopian type future That's right. and so we're programming in a, a, our own unrolling of this, whatever it is. In linear time, you know a little bit about your past, but you never can tell your future. It's always up for grabs, and they can create expectations out there that you can live into. It's, a, it's, it's like putting on a railroad track without any, without any uh, knowledge of where you're going. And they've used it to terrorize everybody generational, generationally right now. Since they've taken us away from our natural way of viewing time, which is cyclical time, and put us into this linear, linear pattern, we're, uh, it seems like we're, we're coming into an increasingly dystopian future. And we don't see any way out. And we, we lose hope. And we get all get all bound up in living out this linear reality. When reality really, when you think of it in nature, in nature there's nothing that's not cyclical. Everything involves a cycle. Summer, fall, winter, spring, uh, the daily cycle, morning, afternoon, evening, night. Uh, People cycle through the uh, four stages of human life, you know, youth, uh, your second age, which is your adult years, and your third age, which is, you know, your declining years and remembering, and your fourth would be extreme old age, death, and getting ready for cycling back into, uh, into life. There's a great comfort involved in living in cycles because you know what to expect it's happened before and uh you know we've gotten through it we've lived through it here's what's happening by not viewing things in cyclical time you have no idea uh i know that there's the the christian um description of the the last days and the and the trumpets and the Antichrist coming. Boy, that has that happened before? Is that a cycle? Or is that a linear thing that they put into our psyche to make us be afraid? I think that there's probably nothing that isn't cyclical. 
and it's just trying to find out what the cycles are and how they're playing in here that might give us some idea about what's what's coming and why they're doing this they're playing into something they, they seem to be um, pushing towards some end and uh, you can't accept the fact that it could be a one world government enslaving consciousness uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me uh, but I, right now i don't have a better explanation uh, but what we're going to do next week and then we'll continue is look into different cyclical ways of looking at reality and next week we're going to look at the yuga cycles and uh, see if that gives us any insight as to what what's happening right now and uh, how we got into this duality and how we might get out of it anyway did many did you have other things to say at the end here um I'm not sure that I do. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure that I do. I just, uh, you know, I'd like to thank uh, oh, the, the few of you that came to the chat room and uh, express my condolences on what's going on there. Um, hope it turns around for you and everything's okay. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Spread this around. Let's let's. Um, and please encourage people to go visit the, the Pinecone Utopia portal, .wordpress.com, and contribute to that. Yeah, I mean, share your experiences with everyone. and Yeah, because we're all, too. this is one way we can always help one another and uh, feel more like a community. People that call me during the day that are TIs feel so isolated. Yeah. And this is one place where actually that's what why I shared the reading of that book, The Rape of the Mind, because what I read this morning was all about how they use isolation. So I thought it really, you know, offered a lot of insights into the whole tactic of using isolation. And you know, the more we know how they're what they're doing, the less it can affect us. Sometimes, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so that's it for me. So we'll keep chugging along. Hopefully we'll be back next Sunday. And, right. Uh, I was waiting for the next part. I didn't realize that's where you were going to stop. So right. join in next week to hear what comes next. Yeah, we're going to keep going down this rabbit hole. And then we have to jump to another one. But uh, this will be interesting to talk about after we get it all laid out here. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been wonderful. Join us on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time for the Techno Crime Fighter Forum. And uh, keep people coming to this portal because this is going to have a really positive effect on the whole community. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.